Well, guys, sometimes things happen, and weapons, unfortunately, due to simple oversight, I'm quite sure, do seem to get neglected from time to time. And so a lot of people will say, well, what do you do with them? Really, basically, depending on exactly what's wrong with it, as long as it is structurally sound, a good cleaning, maybe some touch up here and there to make it look pretty again, if that's what you're interested in. Good cleaning, relube, and make sure everything functions all right, really is all you gotta do. Uh, hopefully, you know, you don't run into any pitting or anything like that. Uh, what we've got here, guys, this is Jay's um, little persuader that he just bought. Now, he bought it off of a friend of his, and uh, it's obviously been neglected for quite some time. But the story goes is that uh, he used to work in a bar, and it was underneath the counter of the bar for many, many years. Of course, first thought comes to mind is you got uh, drinks and all kinds of shit poured on. Apparently, that wasn't the case, but it definitely wasn't uh, kept up. Uh, then it spent several years underneath this dude's bed uh, collecting dust, God knows what all else. So um, we're going to get into it. So what we'll have to do first, um, now Jay bought it from the guy, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. He bought it from the guy because he couldn't pass up the deal on it. I think he paid about a hundred and a half for it, something like that, maybe just a little bit more. And uh, even $200, if, as long as it's structurally sound, I think you're gonna be all right. Um, but it is in pretty bad shape as far as it looks now. Now he did tell him that last time he fired it, it fired fine. Now we'll get into that a little bit later on. But the first thing we, had, we gotta do is get into it, see what all we got. So um, cycling the shotgun itself, it feels sticky. Okay, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's even, but it's almost like it's gummy. So that's probably the oil, beer spilled on it. God knows what all else. It, of course, it is safe. And uh, so let's just uh, get into it. Now, it is a Mossberg 500 Persuader. It's an eight-shot model with just a pistol grip. So it should come off here. God, oh, there it goes. And of course, on a Mossberg, the 500 series guys, you cock the bolt, bring the bolt back just a little bit so the barrel will unlock itself and come free. And look here, pet hair. Yep, we definitely got a lot here. Uh, let's pull some light over here so we can see. Definitely got a lot going on here, a lot of dirt, pet hair, gunk, dust, God knows what all else. I don't know if we can see down in the, oh my gosh. All kinds of crap down in there too. Hopefully it's not pitted. But it uh, doesn't seem to be on the outside, but uh, we'll get into it more. Uh, much of the same thing here, guys. As you can see, a bunch of gunk, pet hair, Lord knows what all else. Let's get into it a little bit more. So first thing we got to do, in order to uh, tear it apart, you gotta get this uh, grip off of it. I did loosen it a little bit earlier, so it'll be a little bit easier to take off. Just an Allen bolt, unscrews. And it comes off, and then we punch this out and trigger group comes right out now looking at the trigger group guys um, yeah it doesn't seem to have any rust on it but it's definitely got a bunch of foreign material dust pet hair God knows what all else uh, so we'll have to it's not frozen though uh, okay let's go ahead and take this thing out All right, there's a slide. Now we're going to take these out. All right, there's your lever. Bolt comes out the front. Yeah. And again here, comes the slide 
or the pump. And again, here we got a lot of stuff down in here, guys. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm gonna try to get it where you can. There's a lot of stuff down in here. And uh, so yeah, it's kind of a mess. So what we're gonna do, guys, I'm gonna get set up and then we're gonna try to clean it. I'll try to take this tube off too. We'll get all the parts lined out. Bolts gummed up pretty good. A little bit of rust here. Not bad, but boy, it's got a lot of, it's, it's a mess. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna refurbish this thing. That'll make it work and run again. So let me get some stuff set up and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, guys, we're back. I uh, got everything disassembled on it. I wanted to run over uh, the disassembly with you real quick before I uh, started cleaning everything. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get this magazine tube off. It's obviously never been took off. And from the factory guys, they use some kind of, I don't know if it's Loctite or whatever it is, but it's real sticky. Of course, that's probably from over time too. But it can be a pain in the butt to get off. And of course, y'all seen Pete's videos, you know, hey, good piece of leather, old belt leather does wonders. You don't want to put it right on the on your gun itself. Uh, just worked with it and I did heat it up, had to heat it up. Uh, had to heat the bottom of this magazine up here, uh, right below the, the magazine tube. And it just, um, you know, in order to get it to loosen up and I just kept working with it back. And once I got it to break a little bit, went back and forth and I was able to go ahead and unscrew it. Just take your time with it because if you can mess those up, then you'll have to buy a new magazine tube. So anyway, going over the parts, we do have our, um, our magazine housing, um, the bolt slide, the ejector and ejector uh, screw, bolt uh, group itself, the um, cartridge interrupter and cartridge stop, the lever, um, the action slide, the magazine tube, magazine tube spring, the limiter, the follower, the trigger group, trigger group pin, um, the um, pistol grip, and of course the, uh, the barrel itself. Now I will, uh, I'm going to do a cleaning of this guys off camera because it's going to take a while and this video will be two hours long. So I'll do that off camera, but I will do a complete reassembly of all of this on, on film. So. Um, when I get ready to put it back together, guys, after I get it clean, I'll see you then. Okay, guys, right, uh, we're ready to reassemble. Now, there's a couple of things I've gone ahead and done ahead of time uh, just to save some time here. I've gone ahead and I've reassembled the foregrip area. This is just simply a, a nut on the end of it or a bolt here on the, or, you know, a ring on the end of it. And uh, this tube slides out of it. I have gone ahead and wiped down both the uh, forend and the pistol grip with ballastol, one of the great things about ballastol, it does a lot of stuff. It brings it back, makes it look good, plus it helps to protect that polymer. Now another thing that I did do here guys is on this heat shield. Now guys this heat shield was pretty bad looking. It was kind of green. I didn't like the way it looked. It didn't go good with the rest of the rifle and our shotgun. And Jay had actually even mentioned, he said, I don't know, maybe redo it kind of like a gloss or a semi-gloss. So, I was gonna go ahead and black it or blue it with a, with a blacking kit. I think it's just a, just a heat shield, paint it. So that's what I did. I painted it with some high temperature engine block paint. And that's what you're gonna wanna use if you do anything like this, guys, because um, if you go down to Walmart and buy the 99 cent can of paint, you're gonna regret it. So don't waste your time, spend the money, get the high temp stuff. It won't come off. Plus it'll resist oils and it won't get all gummy. That other stuff will gum up, I'll tell you that from experience. So I thought it came out looking pretty good. So I think it looks pretty good. So the only thing we really got to do is put it back together. And it's a basic Mossberg 500 assembly. I'm going to try to get this camera over here and I'm probably going to bang all over it. But we're going to try to see if we can't let you see what's going on. Um, so we're going to start off with the elevator. Now the best way I've found to put these in guys is to put the thing down in the damn gun because you squeeze it together and there's a hole here and a hole here that these two pins ride in. Well, you have to finagle around uh, this uh, the um, safety right here and sometimes you just simply cannot get this squeezed around it, okay? So it's better just to put it down in there and then pull it together and do it. Uh, the next thing is the bolt group itself. Just slide it in there. Got to get it past the extractor. Let's see what we're doing. Sometimes you got to use two fingers to get it past. 
better go push it down and you can pull it all the way on back I actually pull it about halfway up so it's there um, the next thing that we want to want to do is put on the uh, for the um, fore end itself so when we put it together you got to remember to push down on the two rails so that they'll go in the, in the two holes so guide those in and they'll stop right here so you have to push them down again and then they should go on in and it's going to make a liar out of me too there we go and they'll ride inside those two rails all right now at this point in time back here on the back I remember showing you this once before and I don't know if you can see this or not probably not I need better lighting something fierce but at any rate right here you've got two parts there's your rail you've got these two two parts here the end of the slide here for the uh, cartridge interrupter it's right here and so you're going to want to bring the notches there's a notch on this side and a notch on this side of the two legs that come in from the uh, fore end and I line them up right here together so that they're even okay and then on the bolt itself I bring it about halfway the reason for that and I mentioned this before is whenever you put in the bolt slide it's got to fit out it's got to fit down in there so it will usually so it will usually slide right in probably won't this time there it is and uh, then it will it'll slide below this uh, as you're looking down into the gun or down in the receiver the bottom rail and then you can actually pull it all the way forward okay at that point so the next thing that we want to do is we want to put in our interrupter and our interrupter has a pin on it so it's pretty easy to know which way it goes in and our stop and of course the stop with the curved part facing in such as the interrupter and it has its own little grooves that it fits into now here comes the fun part as i mentioned this before you remember on my thunder ranch when you get ready to put the trigger group in you kind of have to hold these two apart at the back the interrupter and the cartridge stop and then the trigger group should slide in sometimes you have to fight with it which is what i'm going to end up doing this time i'm sure Finally, it's in. Okay. And the last thing is the pin itself. Put it in. And use a mallet I have ready. And it's in. That seems pretty smooth okay so the last thing that we want to do is put our barrel on and just like last time bring the bring the bolt back some we line our barrel up and we screw it down and the last thing but not least, is our pistol grip. We've got a bolt here for the pistol grip. It uses a quarter inch Allen. I'm off camera probably. <laughs> going anywhere all right let's back the camera up take a look at it and there she is guys well I'll tell you what it moves a lot smoother safety works All right, there it is, guys. That's all she wrote. That is our reassembly 
and our refurbished of a Mossberg Persuader. Now guys, this gun here, all it really needed was some tender love and care, some cleanup on it, some re-oil and everything. Didn't have to replace anything. There wasn't anything broken on it. Thank God it didn't have any pitting on it, um, especially inside the barrel, it was clean. And so it's very, very easy to bring a neglected gun back to life. Um, so the biggest thing is whenever you're buying a used firearm, shotgun, rifle, whatever, if you can find one, or if you're pretty sure, and you've made sure that it's structurally sound, you know, I mean, when you first saw this gun, a lot of people would say, oh, I wouldn't have paid $100 for it. But structurally, it was very, very sound. Uh, it just needed some tender love and care. Now, it's a $200 gun easily. Very well worth the money, and it really didn't cost you anything to fix it, you know, clean it up. Took it completely apart, refurbished it. No doubt in my mind she's going to fire. We'll make sure of that and then Jay will get it back. Then he'll have a nice little home defense weapon. Anyway, that's all I got, guys. I hope you liked the vid. A little disjointed in some areas, but uh, sorry about that. But there it is. Very, 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 very simple to bring a neglected gun back to life. All right, guys, that's all I got. You guys take care. Later.